Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of the Catskills. Our minister is Reverend Bob Janice Dillon, who will be back um, probably next week. I'm not sure about that, but it's possible. I am Vicki O'Darty, a member of the worship committee and the worship associate for this morning. A big welcome to our Zoom attendees this morning. Uh, we are, of course, not in person. We are on Zoom. Unitarian Universalism is a liberal religious faith that carries no creed and welcomes all seekers. We are guided by a set of principles and written sources that encompass the many ways we come to know and understand the world, the universe, and the divine. Our principles are important to us at UU Catskills, and we live our values on a, on, on a daily basis. We affirm that Black Lives Matter. We are a welcoming congregation for the LGBTQ community. We are a congregational affiliate of the Ulster Immigrant Defense Network, and we are an active voice in the effort to address climate change. Community circles connect members with others that live in their local community. There are nine circles in different areas who meet monthly, in person, or online through Zoom. If you would like to get in touch with the circle in your area, please contact the office administrator. If you would like to contact someone at UU Catskills, for those attending on, well, online, a contact list is shown on your screen. You can visit our website, uucatskills.org, to find contact information. Also, to be added to our mailing list and to find the latest newsletter. If you're a visitor and would like to be added to our mailing list, you can put your name and email address in the chat box area on the Zoom. I remind those of you who are joining us online that during the service, you're encouraged to stay muted. We encourage you to read our June newsletter at, that members and others on our distribution list received by email. It is also found on our website. There you will find newsworthy items on the happenings in our UU community and also upcoming events for the month. Weekly updates are also sent by email and there you will, there you will find events for the coming week. We have two announcements for today. The Sacred Ally Quilt Project will be in Kingston from June 13th through June 18th. 10 quilts stitched to memorialize George Floyd's last pleas are in Kingston this week at the gallery space at the Pine Street African Burial Grounds at 157 Pine Street. This is an experience not to be missed. Visiting hours are from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. weekdays and noon to five on Saturday. On Wednesday, June 15th, there will be a special community conversation facilitated by the Sacred Ally Quilt Ministry the 18 minute documentary, Stitch, Breathe, Speak, will be shown at 6 p.m., followed by sharing. Come and absorb the quilts and share a time of conversation with Reverend Bob and others. The conversation will be held at 157 Pine Street also. Saturday, June 18th, starting at noon is the Juneteenth celebration in Kingston. The quilts display in the film will be available all day. Another other announcement, the congregation is invited to hear the Key of Q, the LGBTQ and allied singers of the Hudson Valley at their open rehearsal in our sanctuary on Monday, June 13th at 7 p.m. They've been using our sanctuary to rehearse for the past couple of months and gratitude would like and ingratitude would like to invite members of the congregation to sit in and hear what they've been working on. Nothing is at performance quality and there's only about 25 minutes of music, but it should still be a good time. There they are. There's the community circles. <laughs> my, my thanks to everyone who is assisting with the today's service. Our Zoom services are made possible by our technical team. Our Zoom host this week is Don Critchell. Our prelude and offertory music is performed by Catherine Catabiani. 
After the service, for those attending via Zoom, please stay for our breakout rooms for a virtual coffee break. For our prelude this morning, Catherine Catabiani will perform Ain't Misbehaving by Thomas Waller and Harry Brooks. Thank you, Catherine. If you have a chance, please light it as I light mine. Join me in uh, chalice lighting words that are on your screen. We light this chalice in grateful, loving community, even in the darkest of times. May its flame light paths to courage, justice, and hope. <clears throat> Join me in the unison affirmation. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love to all living beings. May we know once again that we are not isolated, but connected in wonder and joy to mystery and miracle in the universe, in this community, and in each other. Our climate change words today are excerpted from the book, All We Can Save, Truth, Courage, and Solutions for the Climate Crisis. The words are by Christine Nieves Rodriguez. She wrote this after the devastation of Hurricane Maria. I thought I had to leave the island in all its beauty to rise on my own. And so many others like me have disengaged from their communities, overwhelmed by trying to survive, too worried about prestige and power, too jaded. It turns out that communities are the most important force that allows humans to weather great storms, literally and metaphorically. The climate crisis will intensify, but our communities will continue to rise because they were always standing. Our opening words today are titled, Blessed Are We, which was written by Andrea Hawkins Kemper. Blessed are we who gather with open hearts together in this space today. Blessed are we, the chalice lighters of resistance, justice, love, and faith. Blessed are we, the heretics, the outcasts, the walkers of, of our own way. Blessed are we, the border crossers, the refugees, the immigrants, the poor, the wanderers who are not lost. Blessed are we, 
the transgressors, the trans trespassers, the passers-by, the cause takers, the defiant, the compliant. Blessed are we, the hand extenders, the sign makers, the protesters, the protectors. Blessed are we, the trans women, trans men, the non-binary, the cisgender, the multigender, the no gender. Blessed are we, the friend, the stranger, the lonely, the hidden, the visible, the authentic. Blessed are we who rise in solidarity. Blessed are we who cannot. Blessed are we who do not. Blessed are we for this is our beloved community. And this is who we are. <clears throat> Please join in singing hymn number 1031. May it be filled with loving kindness, which is a traditional Buddhist, Buddhist meditation adapted by Mark Hayes. The music is by Ian Riddle. The song comes to us from the First Unitarian Society of Milwaukee. The words are not on the screen, but I think you'll get the idea and be able to sing along. So please join me. The story today is um, Maybe Yes, Maybe No, which is a traditional story presented by Leah Morris. Uh -oh. Let me tell you about Farmer Chin. <laughs> Farmer Chen had a pretty typical life. He had his acres and his harvest to tend to. He had his animals and his family to help with the tasks. He also had neighbors who would sometimes visit and bring dumplings and their opinions. One day, Farmer Chen's strongest, most beautiful horse ran away. And the neighbors came immediately to express their sorrow for Farmer Chen having lost one of his most valuable possessions. And they asked him if he wasn't just sad as he could be about that change of fortune. After all, losing value is a horrible thing to experience. Farmer Chen's response was, maybe yes, maybe no. The following day, that horse returned with 10 other wild horses, equally beautiful, equally strong, adding to Farmer Chen's stables. And the neighbors came running, celebrating, saying how wonderful it was that he now had all of these additional horses. Farmer Chen's response was, maybe yes, maybe no. The next day, his oldest child, who was to be the heir to the farm, the child who showed the most interest in inheriting this land and this responsibility, was taming the horses, or trying to, and their leg was broken in the process. And the neighbors came running once again to lament this change of fortune, saying how disappointed Farmer Chin must be that his child would now grow up, possibly with a limp for the rest of their lives. Isn't that just a sorrowful, sad state of affairs? Farmer Chin said, maybe yes, maybe no. A week later, an announcement went throughout the kingdom that war was at hand and that the young, strong, able, 
able-bodied children would be conscripted into the army and into the service of the kingdom. But Farmer Chin's child wasn't able to go because their leg had just been broken. And the neighbors came running with the dumplings and the opinions saying how wonderful it was. What a relief it must be to Farmer Chin that his child would not have to go and fight in the war. And Farmer Chin responded, I bet you can guess, maybe yes, maybe no. This story reminds us that we always have the choice to remain open, to embrace all the possibilities in a situation. When we might be tempted to immediately assume that something is a tragedy or even a great boon, that we might take a second, reevaluate the situation and see how it unfolds. And you know, that story inspired me to write this song. Meditation today is on letting go, and it's it's actually called Meditation on Letting Go. It's by Carol Holm and Morton. Many of us carry a burden of worry, anxiety over the state of the world, worries about money, about our environment, our families, about peace and justice. May we trust that nothing will get worse for us putting that burden down for a moment. May we let go of what weighs us down. May we find that we can set down worry for longer and longer periods of time. In our experience of letting go, we, may we be open to the possibility that we need not pick up our worries, our worries, to pick our worries back up. May we find passion and strength to work for change where we have the power to do so and to let go where we do not. If not forever, let us put down any worries or anxiety for our time of quiet. May we be in quiet together. May we trust that nothing will get worse for us putting that burden down for a moment. May we let go of what weighs us down. May we be in quiet together now.
Half plate donations for June 2022 will go to the Hudson Valley LGBTQ Community Center. Center's mission is to strengthen, support, and celebrate our diverse, diverse LGBTQ plus community in achieving its fullest potential and creating a more equitable world. You'll see on the screen that there are several ways to contribute to UU Catskills for our plate this morning. You may donate by using our website, uucatskills.org slash donate, by texting to the number given or by going online to uucatskills.org or by using the phone app, Vanco. You can also mail your donations to our office address. For our offertory today, we have Catherine Catabiani performing the song, Do Nothing Till You Hear From Me, which was written by Duke Ellington. Our sermon today was written by Reverend Ellie Kemmler, who shares her words with us because we are participants in the Soul Matters program of the Unitarian Universalist Association. The sermon that I will present is titled, Calling on Wholeness. I decided early on in my work as a minister that if someone asked me to bless something, I would say yes, whenever humanly possible. That is what ministers do, I thought. We bless things and have, I have blessed many things over the years, houses and barns and art studios, babies and elders and pregnant bellies. And of course, I've blessed people who are dying and people who have died and people who are very much alive. One of the best blessings I ever did was for the Women's Biker Club of Central Massachusetts, who called themselves with pride and humor, Dykes on Bikes. Apparently it is fairly common for Catholic priests to do a blessing of the bikes for motorcycle clubs, but this was 15 or 18 years ago in a small country town. And the local priest, whom they asked first, did not feel it was the greatest ideas for him to bless the Dykes on Bikes. Luckily, he sent them to talk to our congregation instead. They roared up to the church one Sunday, just toward the end of coffee hour. About 25 women on motorcycles, and it was very, very loud and very, very cool. Congregation came outside, and two of the teenagers carefully put holy water on the handlebars of each of the bikes. I asked each rider to tell me quietly what she felt she especially needed a blessing for. And they were such tender things, healing from breast cancer, 
the repair of broken relationships, the well being of families. The whole congregation said a blessing uh, that was something about may you ride safely and may there be joy and freedom and gladness in your journey. And the women started up their bikes again and roared off down the street. It was pretty great. I have never once regret, regretted the decision to offer blessings when asked. But the other thing I have learned, and this is probably even more important, is that I don't bless alone. All of us have the capacity to bless. It is something all of us can do. I think my congregation is perhaps a little unusual in this tendency of ours to bless so much. I remember how our sabbatical minister was a little surprised to discover when I showed her around my office that I keep little vials of holy water in my desk drawer. Other colleagues have been uh, surprised to learn I carry a vial of holy water in my bag at all times. What do you do with it? They ask me. I give it away. I give it to people who are struggling or facing surgery or some other hard thing so that they can give themselves a blessing when they need it. Pour it on their heads or rub it on their hurt places or sprinkle it on their doorsteps or sleeping children. Or maybe just keep it and carry it around to help them remember they are loved or not alone or whatever they need to remember. I know someone who keeps his in his pocket most days. He just likes to have it there. So what then does it mean to offer a blessing, to be a blessing? To bless something or someone is to invoke its wholeness, to help remind the person or thing you are blessing of its essence, its sacredness, its beauty, and to help remind yourself of that too. Blessing does not fix anything. It is not a cure. I always remind people of this when the animal blessing comes around and people want the blessing to help make their dog not be afraid of thunder or to just stop barking every time the doorbell rings. A blessing does not fix us. It does not instill health or well-being or strength. It reminds us that those things are already there within us. A blessing is a way to remember strength to invoke the capacity to grow and to heal and to change, to resist giving up. That is all a blessing is, but that is so much. The poet, theologian, and former priest John O'Donohue wrote extensively about blessing. In his book, To Bless the Space Between Us, he talks about the need to recover what he called the lost art of blessing. He says, when a blessing is invoked, it changes the atmosphere. Some of the plentitude flows into our hearts from the invisible neighborhood of loving kindness. In the light of blessing, a person or situation becomes illuminated in a completely new way. In a dead wall, a new window opens. In a dense darkness, a path starts to glimmer and into a broken heart, healing falls like morning dew. Let us begin to learn to bless one another. Whenever you give a blessing, a blessing returns to unfold you. So much of the blessing we do to help people cross these crucial, is to help people cross these crucial thresholds, to help us navigate new experiences and the strange and sometimes difficult passages of every human life. This is a lot of what religious community is for to offer each other blessings, to remind each other of strength in times of illness and recovery, birth and death, grief and joy. Think about the last blessing you offered someone, perhaps without even knowing you did so. Was it the blessing of touch? The blessing of cooking and serving food? The blessing of folding clean laundry? Think about the last time you felt blessed when you felt taken into the care of someone's heart. Think about how it feels to be blessed. Think about the blessings you can give today, right now. I offer you these words of blessing by John, O'Don John O'Donoghue for this moment. May I live this day compassionate of heart, clear in word, gracious in awareness, courageous in thought, generous in love. Thank <laughs> you.
our hymn today, and our second hymn today is number six, Just As Long As I Have Breath. The words will be on your screen. on the screen as we extinguish our chalices. Oh, I got it on just in time to extinguish the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together. I want to see if I can get to the check the room. You're invited to stay and you'll be automatically assigned to a breakout room, okay, for light conversation afterwards. Visitors are welcome to stay and meet congregation members. It will take a few minutes for us to be switched over to a virtual room. Okay, so just hang on. All right, thank you for attending. From you I receive, I receive to you, you I give, give together we share, and from this we live, live. from you, you I receive to you, you I give together we share. And from and this, we live. Go in peace. <laughs>